Today we will be praying Psalm 1. I am absolutely certain that God will speak strongly to your heart through this prayer. Stay until the end because there is a response from God for your life in every area, finances, relationships, family, marriage, every aspect. God has a blessing to deliver to you. And Psalm 1 is a very powerful psalm. We will be reading it, praying it, and God will speak to you through my life. Before we begin, don't forget to leave your prayer request in the comments because I always read the comments and present each prayer request before God. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and activate notifications to receive new prayers consistently. Share this video with a friend, for it will certainly be a blessing in all our lives. Just see what God is revealing to us through this mighty psalm. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In this verse, we can find a hint, a victorious counsel for our lives. And what is this victorious counsel? The Word of God tells us that we are blessed when we do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Whether in our marriage, our work, or our lives. Never listen to the advice of people who are far from God, for their counsel can destroy your life. Instead, always listen to the advice of men and women of God, because through a word of faith, through guidance, you can receive great blessings. And verse 1 of Psalm 1 tells us that blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In other words, we cannot have friendships with people who bring us down, deceive us, mistreat us, or do not desire our success and growth. There are people listening to me now, and many blessings in there. Lives are being hindered because they associate and converse with negative people. When we surround ourselves with negativity, we end up receiving that negativity as well. Therefore, we need to surround ourselves with positive people, with people of God. There are blessings that are withheld because a person associates with bad influences. There is a saying that holds a great truth, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Walk with people of God, walk with women of God, with men of God. Do not have friendships that distance you from the Lord because that can be detrimental to your life. That's why Psalm 1 tells us, Blessed is the man, the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. And in verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. This person is one who meditates on the word of the Lord day and night. You know what happens to this person. Verse 3 shows us, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In other words, when we please God, when we stand firm in His presence, everything we do prospers. My sister, my brother, there are things that often don't prosper because we are not standing firm on the Word. But when you are firm in the Word, everything will prosper. Sometimes, there may be situations that seem not to be prospering, but in reality, they are prospering. And I want to tell you that God has prosperity for your life, prosperity in all areas, financial prosperity, spiritual prosperity, and family. Prosperity but we must obey the presence of the Lord. We must be obedient to God. Our obedience to the Father is very important. It is crucial that we walk with people who draw us closer to God, people who lead us to victory, and people who help us grow. If you have been walking with someone who brings you down, drains your energy, distance yourself from these negative people because they are obstacles in your life. 
That is why it is vital for us to walk in the Word of God and walk with people of God. The Word says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This is the blessing of Psalm 1. What is the blessing of Psalm 1? The blessing of Psalm 1 is that if we stand firm in the presence of the Lord, we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bears fruit in its season, and its leaves do not wither. In other words, you will be a prosperous person, and I want to prophesy in your life that you will be. You are a fruitful tree, and you will bear fruit. And if you are producing fruit, you will produce even more fruit because God has prosperity for you. God has blessings for you. See. God loves you so much, God loves you so much. The Bible says that He is jealous for us. God does not want to lose our lives to the enemy. God loves us deeply. That's why God asks us to be obedient to His Word, obedient to His commands. And the Word of God tells us even more, the wicked are not so, Psalm 1. But they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Verse 6. Because the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. In other words, living far from God is a great danger. We need to be close to the Lord. If you are going through a difficult time, do not doubt God. He will surprise you and grant victory in your life. You know why? Because you are a tree planted by the rivers of water. You are God's eagle, and eagles are meant to soar in high places. Eagles were not made to fly with sparrows. Eagles were made to fly with eagles. You are a lion. You are a lioness. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you are a child of God. You are a daughter of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are a son of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So, let me ask you, what is a child of a Lion? A child of a Lion is a Lioness, a child of a Lion is a Lion. Therefore, if Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and we are His children, then we are Lions and Lionesses. Lions do not walk with wolves, Lions walk with lions and lionesses. We cannot mix with negative people, gossipers, envious individuals, or those who constantly lie. Because when you associate with these kinds of people, little by little, you also start committing the same sins. If you stop and have a conversation for a minute with a gossiper, before you know it, you get involved in gossip too. It's very difficult for you to sit with a gossiper and start gossiping and not fall into that sin. That's why we need to be watchful. Watchful of who we converse with. Watchful of whom you share your secrets with. There are people who approach you wanting you to confide in them, but in reality, that person is only near you to witness your downfall. There are people who come close to you, not to help you, but to bring you down. But the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to deliver us and keep away all these evil people from our lives. It is clear and evident that there will always be evil people trying to enter our lives, but we have to flee from the appearance of evil. You are chosen by God, and that is why God is using me to bring this word to you. Do you know who our worst enemy is? Our worst enemy is not the one who openly declares themselves as your enemy. Our worst enemy is the one who claims to be our friend, but in reality, they are a false friend. They say they are your friend, but deep down, they want to witness your downfall. They say they love you. They say they care about you and even celebrate your success, but in truth, 
they want to. See you fail. Therefore, we must be very cautious. Of course, true friends do exist. Of course, there are people who genuinely want to. See our success, growth, and happiness. Unfortunately, there are also people who don't want to see us happy, who don't want to see us. Thrive or progress in life. But I have news for you, even if everyone else doesn't want to see you succeed, even if there's a group of people out there hoping for your downfall, they will be ashamed and confused. Why? Because you will not fall. You will remain standing. You will not lose, you will conquer. And all those who want to witness your defeat will have to witness the victory of God in your life, in the name of Jesus. Hey, a time of victory is approaching for you. A time to smile is coming. The time of suffering is about to end. The time to sing has arrived. But be watchful. Now, stand firm in the presence of the Lord because God will honor your faith. God will honor your hope, so simply rest your soul and distance yourself from all negative people, from those who have no commitment to God and want to drag you into the world. You might say to me, but can't I talk to a non-believer? Of course you can, but we need to understand that we are here on this earth to influence and win people over to Jesus. We cannot sit in the company of mockers. In other words, we should not join a group of people who speak ill of the gospel, who criticize A and B, who speak poorly of C and everyone else. Sister, brother, you cannot be part of that circle. Let's be vigilant. Let's pray. Let's be cautious about the people we engage with, the conversations we have. Let's be attentive because Psalm 1 reveals this to us. Psalm 1 reveals that we need to seek the presence of God and avoid sitting among mockers. If we act and live accordingly, we will be like a tree planted by streams of water. Our leaves will not wither, and everything we do will prosper. Amen. I want to offer a special prayer for your life. I want to pray for you so that the blessings of Psalm 1 may descend upon your life and that you may be like a tree planted by streams of water. May everything you do prosper greatly for the glory of God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of Truth, we stand in your presence. I want to lift up the life of your servant, the life of your child who is listening to me at this moment. God, intervene with your providence and grant great victories in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open doors and bestow your blessings upon us. God, pour out upon us the blessings of Psalm 1. May we be trees of righteousness and may we bear fruits, fruits of blessings, victories, and achievements. Lord, bless our lives. Lord, open the doors and floodgates of heaven. Pour out blessings and showers of blessings upon the lives of your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus, and we thank you in advance because you are faithful, you are awe-inspiring, Lord. May the blessings of Psalm 1 be upon the life of your daughter, upon the life of your son. God, grant strength, grace, and encouragement. God, keep away from us. All negative friendships, all friendships that wish to see our downfall, all false friendships that desire our ruin. Lord, keep away from us the wicked man. You guard us under your blood, and may you bless our lives. In the name of Jesus, we ask, and in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Thank God and take possession of your victory. Take possession of your blessing. You are a tree of righteousness. You are a tree that bears fruit in the presence of God. Remain steadfast in the presence of the Lord, for great is the reward that comes from above, from God. Today we will be reciting a powerful prayer from Psalm 70. 
I am certain that this prayer will strengthen your faith, fortify your hope. And you will be strengthened in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Share this prayer with your friends and family. It will undoubtedly bless other lives. Feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments. I am always reading and presenting all prayer requests before God. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to become part of this wonderful prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God. We will now read Psalm 70 and then pray to the Lord, calling upon the Almighty God. Psalm 70, written by David, says the following in verse 1, Make haste, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion, let them turn back and be disgraced, those who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame. Who say, Aha, Aha. May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. However, I am afflicted and in need. Hurry for me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. This Psalm 70 shows us. The distressed psalmist, David. He was probably going through a very, very difficult moment in his life. And who has never experienced such? A moment? A moment of anguish, sadness, affliction, to the point where you cry out, saying, God, hurry to deliver me. In verse 5. The psalmist is saying, however, I am afflicted and in need. Have you ever experienced such a moment, a moment of affliction where you feel helpless, alone? But I want you to know that the God who answered David's prayer is the same God we serve. And if your soul is like Psalm 70, anguished, sad, crying out, saying, God, hurry to help me, I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that God will hurry to help you. God will hurry to grant you victory. God will hurry to place in your hands what you have been praying to Him for. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that even in this year, you will experience the best of God on earth. You will conquer everything you have asked for and dreamed of. Just persevere, insist, persist. Stay strong in your purpose because God is faithful to fulfill the promise. And in Psalm 70, the psalmist is saying, I am distressed. Hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus. The blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, 
God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes, hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it. Any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word, and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will. Witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes. Satan cannot prevail. Wherever God places his hand, the enemy cannot prevail, and God is placing his hand upon your situation, upon what you have been praying for. Victory is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Hold on to your victory, hold on to your blessing. Do not give up, insist, persist. Stand firm in faith and prayer because God will grant you the blessing, will grant you the victory, and you will come back to this channel to share your testimony. Make this vow with God. Lord, if you deliver what I am asking for, I will return to Bruno Souza's channel and share my testimony of that word from Psalm 70, Hurry, God, and I will say, God hurried to hear my prayer, answered my plea, and granted me victory for the glory and praise of your holy name. The only thing we need to understand is that every victory is for the glorification of God's name. We have nothing for ourselves, everything is for God. Everything belongs to God, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. When God grants you the house you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the car you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the marriage you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. Of course, we do our part. Of course, we make efforts to conquer, but everything comes from God. It is God who exalts, God who humbles. It is God who impoverishes and God who enriches. It is God who kills and God who makes alive. Everything is under His command, everything belongs to Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For from Him, and through Him are all things. Everything is in the domain of Jehovah, and we serve this God. So take hold of this word. Take hold 
of the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life and believe with all your heart, O God who hurries to grant victory. And the God of Jacob? He is not just the God of the past. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God of Jacob, and He has taken charge of your life. And victory is yours. What has God signed in your life? What has God signed for your life? No eraser from hell can erase what God has written for you. Take hold of your blessing. Lift up your head, turn things around because you were born to conquer, and nothing end. No one can take away the presence of God in your life, within your heart. And at this moment, I want to unite my faith with your faith. I want to unite my hope with your hope. I want to unite my certainty, my conviction with your conviction and certainty. I want to unite my prayer with your prayer, and together, in one unified cry, let us pray the prayer of Psalm 70. Amen. Let us pray, Sovereign God, Eternal Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful, invincible and infallible presence, we stand. We are here to ask of you, we are here to thank you. We are here to pray, to seek your face. You are the one who lives and reigns forever. The psalmist was in a moment of anguish and sadness when he said to you, Hurry, O God, to deliver me. And we want to make the psalmist's words our own. Hurry, O God, to help us. Look upon the tears of your daughter, look upon the tears of your servant who is listening to this prayer, and perhaps is crying and asking you for an answer, a provision that only you can give. Lord, you are the specialist in the impossible. Nothing in heaven, on earth, in the stars, or in the seas is impossible for you. You can do all things. You are the one who walked on water. You are the one who multiplied bread and fish. You are the Lord who healed the paralytic and made him walk again. You are the one who made the blind see. You are the one who raised the dead. You are the one who died and rose again on the third day. You are powerful. You are magnificent. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the Lamb of God, the Bright Morning Star. Lord, You are the Alpha and the Omega, the Beginning and the End. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are present in all places, and nothing is hidden from You. You know and You search all things. You know the heart of Your servant, the heart of Your handmaid. You know our hearts. God, you. Interpret the tears of the faithful believer. And in this moment of prayer, we want to present ourselves before you. Just as the psalmist. David presented himself in Psalm 70. And he said, But I am poor and needy. Look, O God, upon the affliction, the need of your people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask of you, we implore before you, we prostrate ourselves at your feet, recognizing your greatness. Recognizing that only you are faithful to fulfill, to accomplish the promises. You are not a man that you should lie, nor a son of man. That you should repent. Your word says that if your people, who are called by your name, will humble themselves, pray, seek your face. And turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And here we are, humbling ourselves, seeking, praying, repenting for all the mistakes we have made, and we ask you, O oh God, to do the impossible and the supernatural, to do what the doctors could not do. Do what the lawyers, judges, and prosecutors could not do. Open the way for every cause in the justice system, Remove the obstacles, and grant victory to your servant. And to this afflicted mother who has been praying for her child's deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and addiction, set free, Lord, 
this woman's child and grant victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, to this afflicted and needy mother who prays for her children, who prays without God for her children, grant this gift, this blessing to your servant in the name of Jesus. Rescue, O God, this young woman, this young man from the addiction of alcohol and drugs, and make her a missionary in your presence, make him a preacher of the gospel. God, in the name of Jesus, I present this couple who are in crisis, this couple who is on the verge of divorce. God, in the name of Jesus, reach out with your outstretched hand, enter with your power and restore this marriage. Restore this family that is in crisis and grant victory to God for the glory and praise of your name. We cry out to a God who is faithful, who is mighty, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in the universe. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to perform the miracle, Lord, for this woman and this man who are seeking a job opportunity. Open the door of employment. Lord, bless the financial life of your daughter and son so that they can come back here in prayer and share the testimony that the door of employment has been opened for the glory of God. Open the door of employment in the lives of your daughter and son. Bless the material aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus, especially. Bless our spiritual lives, make us more intimate with you, make us Lord, more and more of your friends. Each day, make us more and more excellent worshipers. God, may we seek your face every day not out of pain, but out of love. It is love that we want to seek your presence. God, we trust in your power and we place you above all else, above everyone. You are in first place in our hearts. God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to serve you just for what you can give us, but we want to serve you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. God, in the name of Jesus, bring your peace, bring your blessing, your love, your favor. May the blessings of Psalm 70 manifest in the lives of this woman and this man who is listening to me. I present before you, O oh God, all the prayer requests that have been placed in the comments of this video. Enter with your blessing, enter with your provision, enter with your answer, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask. You, in the name of Jesus. We cry out to you in the name of Jesus, we implore you before you, Lord, exalt the humble, bring down the one who exalts himself, grant victory to your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Come and heal the illnesses, whatever type of illness is in the bodies of your sons and daughters, let every illness disappear now in the name of Jesus. Disappear. For the word of God tells us in Isaiah 53 that the Lord has borne our sicknesses. The punishment that brought us peace was upon you, and by your wounds, we are healed, restored, transformed. So send your healing, send your favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hurry, O God, we are asking you as servants. We are imploring you as humble servants in your presence. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing, without you, we will achieve nothing. But with you, Lord, we can do all things, with you, O God, we can overcome the challenges of life. We acknowledge that, without you, we are powerless, for you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Therefore, O God, I present the requests of your sons and daughters and grant a special victory, an exclusive blessing, a blessing. From your throne in the lives of each brother, each sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of Psalm 70 be upon our lives, and may you, Lord, hasten by your mercy to grant us victory in every area of our lives, so that our testimony may be told and your name glorified in our testimony of victory and blessing. In the name of Jesus, we ask and thank you in advance for 
all that you have done and all that you will continue to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen and thanks be to God, and may God bless. Your life. Take hold of this word, take hold of this prayer. Believe that the God of David, the God who hastens to help us, is with you, and with God, we are the majority, with God, we will break down walls, and with God, we will overcome giants. With God in our lives, we will overcome the storms. With God, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God of love and mercy. May God bless you greatly, you and your entire family. A big hug, and may the peace of the Lord Jesus be in your heart. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life. The peace of the Lord Jesus, and may God bless us more and more. Today, we are going to pray with all our faith, asking God to break every chain through the power of Psalm 91. Before we begin praying, it is very important that you type your prayer request in the comments. Let's pray for every bondage, everything that is trying to hinder your victory, to be broken. Every evil, in the name of Jesus, will be defeated. We will read Psalm 91 and together, with all our faith, we will pray to the Almighty Lord. In this prayer, I am certain that the Lord will deliver victory, blessings, and rewards. Let us pray together. With all our faith. It is also important that you share this prayer with seven friends, whether on Facebook, Instagram, or in your WhatsApp. Contacts and Groups Share this prayer with seven or more friends so that they may be blessed through this prayer. For when we bless someone's life, we are also blessed. So, bless the lives of your friends. Share this prayer with them. Let us read Psalm 91 with all our faith and then pray to the Lord. Amen. And Psalm 91 says the following, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but you shall not be harmed, only with your eyes you will witness the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No harm shall befall you, no plague shall come near your home. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon lions and cobras, you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, I will deliver him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God for this powerful word. This is Psalm 91, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. Type the following phrase in the comments, the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life at this moment. Place your hand on your heart and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Place your hand on your head and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Stretch your hands high and repeat with me, the blessings of Psalm 91 are in my home, in my family, in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Claim this word. Claim your victory and in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray together to the Lord and claim all the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Therefore, in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray to the Sovereign God. And Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth. In your holy and blessed presence, here we are. We are here in this moment of prayer, praying Psalm 91 with all our faith. God, I want to present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. Lord, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the life of each person who requested prayer, help, and provision. May you send your angel to sever the ties, undo the entanglements, and break every bondage in their emotional life, financial life, spiritual life, and health. May all chains and constraints be shattered now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed in our lives, in our homes, in our families. God, in the name of Jesus, shelter us under the shadow of your wings. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon us. I lift up the financial life of everyone listening to me right now. May every bondage, every hindrance blocking financial blessings be broken, every evil be broken, every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask for your blessing upon the financial life of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them, grant them victory, open doors of employment. Open the doors of employment. Lord, in the lives of your people, in the name of Jesus, for those who are unemployed. May the door of employment open, and may your name be glorified. For those who are in debt, may all their debts be paid in the name of Jesus. Open doors, prosper your sons and daughters, so that they may pay off their debts. I present those who have a business, may the Lord prosper them. For those seeking their first job, May the Lord open this door. For those who are studying, may the Lord bless their minds, may the Lord illuminate their minds. And may they prosper in their studies. God, may the blessings of Psalm 90 be upon the financial lives of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them from the north, south, east, and west. Bring forth prosperity. Showers of blessings. Showers of victory. Showers of power upon the lives of everyone listening to me at this moment. God, I present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. No matter how simple the prayer request may be, I ask you, Lord, to perform miracles, to do the unprecedented, to accomplish the impossible, and grant victory to your servants, to your handmaidens, for the glory of your name. We ask you, Holy Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit of God, I present to you, Lord. Every prayer request. Bring healing to those who are going through a period of illness, of disease. May every disease in the name of Jesus. Disappear now, may every lump disappear, may all pain in the body disappear, may all leg and arm pain vanish in the name of Jesus, may. Every digestive system ailment disappear now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May every sickness vanish in this moment and never return. Bring healing, bring restoration. Bless the health of your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. I also present to you, Lord. The romantic lives of those who are single, those who are dating, those who are engaged and married. May every bondage, every hindrance that tries to block, that tries to tie down the romantic victory of your people be broken. May every evil be rebuked. Bless the romantic lives of each one, bless for the glory and praise of your name those who are single and seeking marriage. May the Lord bless their romantic lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. May the romantic lives of each one listening to me be abundantly blessed, 
even in this year, in the name of Jesus. For marriages in crisis, marriages facing trials, may the Lord bring restoration to those marriages. May the Lord bless families. God, in the name of Jesus, may all evil crumble and may your name be glorified. Bless families. Lord, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the romantic lives of your people. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon their finances, their health, and every area of their lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. Open the pathways. Open the doors, Lord, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask because we believe in the power of your name. Your word says that whatever we ask in your name, believing, we shall receive. And in the name of Jesus, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed upon the lives of your people, and may your name be glorified in the victory of each one of us, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask that every bondage be broken, that every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. May everything that tries to interrupt, everything that tries to paralyze the victory of each one of us, everything that tries to block, be rebuked in the name of Jesus. May the walls crumble, may the giants fall in the name of Jesus Christ, we take possession, Lord, of the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives, in our homes, in our families, for your word reveals to us that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, my fortress, and in Him, I will trust, for He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge, His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague. Come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They will hold you up with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on. High because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor. Him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. May these blessings of Psalm 91 be upon our lives, upon our families, upon our homes, and upon our paths may our paths be opened, may the closed doors be opened, and may your name, the Eternal God, be glorified in our victory. May the Lord bless your people in every area of their lives with peace, blessing, victory, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we pray with all our faith, and we thank you in advance, because you, Lord, are the power, the glory, the strength, and the dominion forever and ever. Cover us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Guard our lives, protect our lives and our families. May your resplendent cloud of glory be upon us. May your sacred mantle be upon us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Amen. And thanks be to God, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Take possession of this word, take possession of this prayer. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. We are here every day, praying to the Lord. 
May God bless your life in a very special way, too. Each subscriber of this channel. Thank you very much, because together we are a prayer family, and our united prayers have great power. A big hug to your heart, and may the peace of the Lord reign over all of us. And remember, you were born to conquer, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. May God bless our lives in a very special way. The peace of the Lord Jesus, may God bless you. I greet all the winners with the holy peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Know that you are a winner in Christ Jesus, and may God bless your life and your family. Today, we will pray Psalm 51, the Psalm of Forgiveness and Divine Mercy. Before we begin praying, I want to Invite you to share this prayer with a friend or family member. It will surely be a blessing in their lives. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to receive more prayers and activate the notifications. When you subscribe to the channel, there is a small bell icon. Click on that bell to activate the notifications, so that whenever a new prayer is released, you will be notified. May God greatly bless your life. Today, we will pray Psalm 51, the Psalm of Forgiveness. Before we start reading, I need to tell you that this entire psalm has a backstory, a story behind it. Psalm 51 will deeply touch your heart. Stay until the end of this video because it will be a blessing for you. Amen. When David wrote this psalm, there was a story that preceded it. The Bible tells us that David was the king of Israel and the Bible says. And David became complacent because he had become king. He had achieved great conquests, great victories, and one day David was in his palace. When he looked beside him, he saw a woman named Bathsheba who was naked, and he desired her. He took the woman's husband and put him in the forefront of the war so that he would die, allowing him to be with the woman. It was a terrible sin that David committed, a sin that angered God, a great sin intentionally committed by David. He put the woman's husband in harm's way, ensuring his death, just so he could marry the woman. He committed a sin that was offensive to God, to the point where God raised the Prophet Nathan and in the presence of David, prophesied so that David would repent of the sin he had committed. So David repents of this great sin, a sin that was considered a sin of death. It was at this point in David's life that he wrote Psalm 51. In verse 1 of Psalm 51, David says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love according to your great compassion blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only. Have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge? Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb, you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let's pause at this verse 7 to explain something to you. Notice that in each verse of this psalm, David is humbling himself before God, asking for forgiveness of his sin. Now, there is a detail. God forgave David's sin, but the consequences of the sin came upon David and his household. God forgave him, yes, God forgives sin, but the consequences of sin will always come. If someone kills another person, it is a sin. A sin that God can forgive, but the consequences of that sin will occur. That person will be imprisoned. That person might even pay with their own life for taking someone else's life. A man who commits adultery. Betrays his spouse.
God forgives, but the consequences of that sin will affect the lives of the adulterous man and woman. God is love, but he is also just. He forgave David, but the justice of God, the sword of God, did not depart from David's house. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, Jesus forgives us, but we must turn away from sin, distance ourselves from sin, flee from the appearance of evil. And David did not do that. He fell into sin, fell into temptation. And in this verse 7, he says, Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. What is hyssop? Hyssop is a plant that grew in Palestine, in Israel, and it was used to sprinkle the blood of the Lamb. In Exodus, when God commanded the blood of the lamb to be placed on the doorposts, they used this plant to sprinkle the blood, the blood of a lamb. And David is saying, Purify me with hyssop, meaning, pour the blood of the lamb over me. The lamb's blood that David is referring to is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Of course, the Bible speaks about it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. And Jesus took upon himself our sins and transgressions. When Jesus was crucified on the cross and his blood flowed, that blood of Jesus is what cleanses us from all sin. No matter the size of your sin, if you are repentant, if you are truly sorry, the blood of Jesus cleanses your sin. That is the word of Jesus to you, go and sin no more. There are various types of sins. In God's eyes, there is no such thing as a small sin or a big sin, but there are different types of sins, and each sin has its consequences. Lying is a sin. Being envious of someone is a sin. Wishing harm upon someone is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Murder is a sin. Adultery is a sin. There are also sins that are hidden. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is not one person who has not committed sin. And each one of us who has sinned receives punishment from God. But if we repent, we receive forgiveness from God, and the greatest sign of repentance in the life of a man or woman is when they stop sinning. Crying is not a sign of repentance for sin. If a person cries and says, I am sorry, that is not a sign of repentance. The greatest sign of repentance is when a person no longer commits the same sin. If they committed adultery, they no longer commit adultery. If they stole, they no longer steal. If they lied, they no longer lie. If they mistreated others, they no longer mistreat them. If they were envious, they are no longer envious. In other words, the greatest sign that we are repentant is when we do not repeat the same mistake and we ask for forgiveness for it. It is like David. He humbles himself and tears his heart apart in this Psalm 51 because he had committed multiple sins at once. He intentionally killed Bathsheba's husband and committed adultery with her. God was angry with David. And when he wrote this Psalm 51, David was consecrating himself, humbling himself in dust and ashes, seeking God's forgiveness and mercy. And in verse 8, he continues to say, Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me, O God. Look at this declaration in verse 10, David says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David is asking God to create in him a pure heart because his heart was stained by sin. But he asks God to give him a pure heart, a heart purified from all iniquity and sin that dwelled within it. And in verse 11, he says, Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your holy spirit from me. 
This verse 11 is one of the most beautiful declarations of David in this Psalm 51. David was a king. He had a crown upon his head. David was a king. He had all the benefits of a king. He could have said, Lord, do not take away my kingdom from me. Do not take away my crown. Do not take away my riches, my possessions. But no. David knew that what mattered most in his life was the presence of the Holy Spirit, and everything he had achieved, he had achieved because the Holy Spirit was with him. So David implores, saying, Lord, do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. As if to say, Lord, you can take the crown, you can take the kingdom. You can take the throne, you can take the riches, but just do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Let your Holy Spirit remain within me. In verse 12, he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors. Your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed. O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will greatly praise your righteousness. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifices, otherwise I would give them, you are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices pleasing to God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In these verses that I just read, verse 17, 16, David is saying that the sacrifices pleasing to God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart that God will not despise. In other words, it is not enough to climb the steps of a church on your knees. It is not enough to fast for 40 days. It is not enough to spend a lifetime on your knees in prayer. If our actions do not change, nothing will change. David is saying that the greatest sacrifice is a broken heart. What is a broken heart? It is a converted heart, a transformed heart. We cannot make sacrifices if our hearts are not transformed by the Holy Spirit. All we need is a broken heart, a heart softened by the presence of God, not a heart of stone, a hardened heart. We need a tender heart, a heart that melts in the presence of God, and all those who have a heart that melts in the presence of God, God hears their prayer. The Bible tells the story of a Pharisee and a tax collector. The Pharisee beat his chest and said, Lord, I sacrifice to you, Lord, I am faithful to you, Lord of my tithes. Lord, I do great things. This Pharisee exalted himself before God. Meanwhile, the tax collector couldn't even look up or towards the sky. He said, Lord, I am a sinner, I am a sinner, I am a great sinner. While the tax collector recognized that he was a sinner, the Pharisee thought he was too holy. And Jesus said that the tax collector, not the Pharisee, went home justified in the eyes of God. God wants us to come to him and acknowledge that we are sinners, in need of his mercy, in need of his forgiveness. There is no strength in ourselves. The only one who is strong is God. If we are strong, it is because God is within us. It is God who makes us strong. The strength I have, the strength you have, comes from God. Grace comes from God. Everything good that exists within us comes from God because all things are from Him, through Him, and for Him. And the psalmist David, he concludes Psalm 51 by saying, Build up the walls of Jerusalem according to your good pleasure. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. David is not saying that sacrifices are unnecessary. It is necessary for us to sacrifice ourselves in prayer, in fasting. But above sacrifice, there must be our broken heart, 
our broken heart before God. So, when David wrote this Psalm 51, he had committed a great sin. But he was there asking for forgiveness, asking for mercy, asking God to pour his mercy upon his life. And God answered. God forgave David. However, God's justice was upon David, upon his family. And David paid a high price for his sin. And we don't have to go through God's punishment for our sin, but we need to have a broken heart. Even if you say, brother, I have no sin. Even so, before God, we need to recognize that we are flawed and weak and in need of God's mercy. In the kingdom of God, there are no supermen or wonder women. We are all weak, and God's strength is within us. That's why we stand. The Bible says that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of Satan came every day and slapped Paul in the face. Imagine that every day. And the Bible says that Paul prayed, asked God for mercy, and said, Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh, remove this situation. And God said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. For when you are weak, then you are truly strong. God doesn't need the strong because he is already strong. God needs the weak to show that he is strong. That's why God used the weak David to defeat the strong one called Goliath. God uses the small to confuse the great. God uses the poor to confuse the rich. God uses those who are not intelligent to confuse those who think they are intelligent. God uses the weak to confuse the strong. God chose you, even in your weakness. God chose you, even though you may say, Brother, my faith is weak, my strength is weak, and my energy is weak. Even so, God chose you, and it is in your weakness that the power of God is manifested. Let me ask you, who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? Who needs a doctor? The one who is already healed? Or the one who is sick? Who needs a doctor? It is the one who is sick, the one who is weak. It's the same with God. God will be by the side of the weak, not the one who thinks they are strong. Because the moment we feel strong with our own strength, that's when we are weak. But in the moment we feel weak, that's when God looks and says, It is in your weakness that I make you strong. It is in your weakness that I lift you up. It is in your weakness that you overcome challenges. It is in your weakness that you defeat giants. So, even if you feel weak, know this, the God who strengthens you is with you. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He didn't say, I strengthen myself with my own power. I am strengthened by the power of God. I am strengthened by the power of my Creator. It is God who makes you strong to overcome the challenges of life, to overcome life's problems, to overcome life's barriers. Receive spiritual strength at this moment to continue marching in the presence of God. You may be weak, but your God is strong. You may be small, but your God is great. You may not have strength, but your God has all the strength. You may not have wisdom, but your God is the very wisdom and guides your steps. You may not have riches, but your God is the owner of silver and gold, and he will prosper your life. You may be, perhaps, without direction, but your God is the compass, your God. Our God is the way, the truth, and the life that guides us to the eternal path. Take hold of this word, take hold of your victory. There are many people who no longer have the strength to pray, who no longer have the strength to go to church, who no longer have the strength to fast, who no longer have the strength to read the Bible. But the Lord is saying to you, 
I am making you strong in this. Moment, strong to overcome the difficult moments of life, strong to overcome problems and challenges. In your weakness, the Lord makes you strong in His presence. Amen. Take hold of this word in your heart. This is Psalm 51. The story is sad. David sinned, but he received forgiveness. The story has a happy ending. He received God's forgiveness, and God lifted David up again. If you fall, God is willing to lift you up if you repent deeply. The Bible says that the righteous may fall seven times, but they will not be utterly cast down, for the Lord will lift them up with power. If you have stumbled on your journey, shake off the dust, rise up, and continue walking in the presence of God. At this moment, I want to offer a special prayer for your life, so that God may forgive our sins, wash us with His mighty blood, and give us strength to stand in the presence of the Lord. Place your hand on your heart. I want to pray for you. If you have committed any sin, if you have done something that displeased the Lord, if you have done something that grieved the Holy Spirit's presence, or if you feel weak or directionless, I want to pray for you at this moment. Amen. Shall we pray? Sovereign Eternal God, our Father, we have just read Psalm 51. David sinned before you. He repented and received forgiveness and mercy from you. And here in your presence, we come to ask for your forgiveness, your mercy. Through the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. May you forgive all sin, wash us with your blood, purify us with your power in. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask, Lord. And may you forgive the sins of your people and give strength to your people, so that your people may continue to walk firmly in your presence, providing strength to your people, guarding our ways, guarding our paths, guarding our souls. Deliver us, Lord, from the temptations that surround us, deliver us from the temptations of sin that surround us and try to enchant us in some way. But the blood of Jesus has power, it rebukes the snares of the enemy. Every spirit of prostitution falls to the ground in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of divorce that seeks to destroy this marriage falls to the ground in the name of Jesus. Every evil spirit that tries to drag this woman and this man into the mire of sin, fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant strength to this man and this woman so that they may resist sin, so that they may resist temptation in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, give strength to this woman so that she does not fall into the sin of adultery with this man who flirts with her. May she not fall, Lord, into the devil's trap. May she not yield to the temptations of hell, but remain faithful to her spouse, to this man who is on the verge of adultery. To this man who is already trying to arrange a meeting with his mistress, in the name of Jesus, set this man free, Lord, do not let him fall into the sin of adultery, cut the bond of adultery, cut the bond of spiritual death. I present these marriages. I present their lives to you, Lord. Their lives are united in matrimony. Do not allow adultery to destroy this marriage. Do not allow, Lord, adultery to destroy this family. So, in the name of Jesus, cut this bond of adultery, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, grant strength to this man and this woman so that they may flee from sin. God, for the glory of your name, we ask for your protection. Guard us under your righteousness, bless our lives, forgive our sins. God, in the name of Jesus, forgive the sins of lying, gossip, envy, and deceit. Forgive all the sins that have passed through this heart. Come, and be cleansed now by the blood of the Lamb shed on the cross of Calvary. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your forgiveness, your mercy, and your deliverance. 
deliver us from all temptations and guard our lives in the hiding place of your omnipresence. For all honor and glory be given to you from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and thanks be to God. As I prayed, God ministered to my heart to say to you. Married man, if you are facing temptation, if you are facing a problem, if a woman is trying to invade your life, do not allow a mistress in your life. Do not trade God's gift for a dish from the devil. You, who are married, you, married man, and you, married woman, do not trade God's gift, which is your husband, which is your wife, for a dish from the devil, which is a lover. Do not destroy your family, do not destroy your home, stay and remain with the woman God has given you. Stay and remain with the man God has given you. Be faithful in your marriage, and the Lord will honor you, prosper you, and make everything right in your life. If you are going through a crisis in your marriage, embrace each other, forgive each other, reconcile, renew your vows, and move forward, but do not let the enemy trip you up. Do not fall into the sin of David, which was the sin of adultery, but remain faithful to God, to your husband, and to your wife, and God will grant you the honor of your faith, the honor of your faithfulness to God. God ministered to say this, so receive this word and remain steadfast with Jesus. Do not let the temptations pull you away. Do not let the temptations of the world lead you into sin, but stay strong with Jesus, stay firm with Christ, neither veering to the right nor to the left. Keep your gaze fixed on God, on Christ. Do not give your heart to sin. Stay faithful because our reward is in Him. A crown of glory awaits us in eternity. Our names are written in the book of life, and God has signed your name in this book. So remain steadfast in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne. Overcome sin, overcome the world, overcome darkness, overcome the devil, overcome temptation. Every temptation that comes against your life, overcome it, flee from sin, run from iniquity, distance yourself from the things of this world that draw you away from God. Draw near to everything that brings you closer to God, surround yourself with friendships that draw you closer to God. If you are single and will marry, Marry someone who draws you closer to God. If you have a husband who is not yet a Christian, bring him closer to God. Help him to know God with love, grace, and tenderness. Can you win him over to Jesus? If your wife is not yet a Christian, slowly and lovingly lead her to Jesus with grace and patience. If your child is not a Christian, approach them with love, grace, and patience, and gradually bring them closer to Jesus until your whole family serves. God. You will be able to say, as Joshua said, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Stand firm without sinning. Fight. Against sin, fight against the world, fight against temptation, and you will overcome by the power and strength of God. It's not by your own. Strength not by your own intelligence, but by the wisdom of God. It's not by your knowledge, but by the knowledge of God. You will be victorious. In the name of Jesus, you will prosper, you will conquer, you will overcome, you will rise up. In the name of Jesus, you will overcome temptation, you will reach the heavens. In the name of Jesus, you will crush the head of Satan, you will rebuke the enemy. And in the name of Jesus, you will receive healing. In the name of Jesus, you will be transformed and renewed. Receive victory, receive comfort, receive grace, receive encouragement. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Say Amen and thank God. I will be ending here, and may the prayer of Psalm 51 have been a blessing to your life.
Thanks to God, He grants us victory through the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I extend greetings of holy and sweet peace. From our Lord Jesus to all my brothers and sisters. May God bless your life. May God bless your family in a special way and shower you. With His abundant blessings. May He manifest Himself powerfully in your life. Today, we will pray Psalm 40. And this psalm will be a blessing to your life and your family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe and activate the notifications to always receive the prayers we are posting here on our YouTube channel. No matter how simple they may be, I am praying for all the requests, presenting all the prayer requests in my prayers, and take possession of your victory because God will grant you His blessing. Today, we will pray Psalm 40, verse by verse, and understand what this Bible text teaches us. Psalm 40, a psalm of David, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, He turned to me and heard my cry. Here, the psalmist is saying that God listened to his cry, and he had waited patiently for the Lord. Waiting can be very difficult at times. It's not always easy to wait when we're expecting something. It's a challenging mission, but nothing is impossible for God. I don't know how long you have been waiting for your victory. I don't know how long you have been waiting for your blessing, but I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you, to inform you that while you wait, God is working for you. While you wait, God is parting the seas in your life. While you wait, God is opening the closed doors. While you wait, God makes the supernatural happen in your life. For this reason, take courage and rejoice in the Lord, because your waiting on God is not in vain. In Psalm 40, the psalmist says, I waited patiently. He didn't say he waited in anguish or worry, but he waited patiently calmly. The question is, how are you waiting? Are you waiting with anxiety or with patience? Wait with patience because God doesn't arrive late. God doesn't arrive early. God arrives at the right time, in the perfect moment to grant you victory, to grant you blessings, to grant you deliverance. God is not delaying. God is perfecting your victory. Say Amen, say thanks to God. And verse 2 says, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Here, the psalmist once again declares that God lifted him out of the mire. Perhaps the psalmist was going through a period of sin and transgression. But in verse 2 of Psalm 40, he says that God lifted his feet out of the mire. This mire represents sin, and God is an expert at pulling people out of sin. He cleanses them with his blood and places them on a rock. This rock that the psalmist is talking about represents Jesus Christ, the eternal rock, and your feet are firmly planted on this eternal rock. It means that no one on this planet can remove you from this rock. Your steps are on the rock, and this rock is God. This rock is Jesus Christ. And when our steps are on the rock, no wind, no struggle, no storm can snatch us from the arms of Jesus. My friend, are you not hearing this psalm by chance? God is saying, Wait on the Lord, for I will also set your feet on a rock, and nothing and no one will take you away from my presence says the Almighty Lord. Psalm 40 is a divine revelation that shows us that God works in the lives of those who wait patiently. It is a divine proof that God lifts men and women from the mire of sin, placing their feet on a rock, establishing their steps. And verse 3, Psalm 40 tells us even more, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. In this verse 4, 
the psalmist is saying. That God has put a song, a hymn of praise, on their lips. It means that you will sing the song of victory. Perhaps you have already cried, felt sorrow, or anguish. Have you thought that God has forgotten you? Maybe you have gone through moments of imagining that God has forgotten you. And maybe you are feeling forgotten by God right now. But I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that the Lord will put a new song on your lips. You will sing the anthem of victory. You will praise the name of the Lord. You will witness the greatness of God in your life and in your story. Rejoice your soul, trust. Wholeheartedly in the Lord, rest and wait, because the best from God is about to come into your life, your finances, your emotions. God will change your story, and you will sing a song of victory. And verse 3 clearly tells us, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to the Lord, a hymn to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. The text here in verse 3 of Psalm 40 is saying, That God will put a song of praise on your lips. And all those who hear this song, all those who witness your victory, will be in awe. They will trust in the Lord. They will look and say, God is in the life of that woman, God is in the life of that man, that young man, that young woman. God will do this in your life. Claim your victory. Believe with all your heart because the best from God is yet to come. Verse 4 Tells us even more, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. In this verse 4, God is saying that blessed are the people who put their trust in the Lord. Hey, don't put your trust in earthly men. Don't rely on your own strength, but put your trust in God. When our trust is in God, we can overcome the giants. When our trust is in God, we can bring down by His power the walls that rise against us. It doesn't matter the size of the giant that has risen against your life or the strength it may possess. It doesn't matter the height of the wall before you, trying to hinder your victory. God's answer to your life today is, Put your trust in me, says the Lord, and I will reveal to you my power, my glory. And you will sing the hymn of praise, the anthem of victory. For I am your God, your healer, your judge, your Shepherd. I am the one who lifts you up, defends you, and guards you. I am the Lord of your life, your story. Trust in me, says the Lord. God, your Father, the one who guards you. Verse 5 goes even further, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us no one can recount to you, were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. In this verse 5, the psalmist is saying, How great are the wonders that God has done! Did you know that every day God performs a miracle in our lives? Every day a miracle happens in our lives. Are you breathing? That is a miracle happening. Are you listening to me? That is a miracle happening. Miracles occur in our lives. Have you ever stopped to imagine how many deliverances the Lord has granted you when you go to work? How many deliverances did God give you when you were returning from work? How many deliverances did the Lord grant you when you went on that trip? God is constantly performing miracles, but we fail to see, we fail to perceive the deliverances, the miracles that God is working in secret and in silence. God operates miracles in your life, so be encouraged and rejoice. You have a God who sees you, loves you. A God who sustains you. A God who is faithful and true to fulfill every word He has spoken to you. And verse 5 speaks about this, how many, O Lord my God, are the wonders You have performed for us. Verse 6 goes further, 
sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. No complaints. Here in verse 6, the psalmist is emphasizing, affirming that listening to God is much better than sacrificing. There are people who think that sacrifice is more important than obedience. And verse 6 tells us, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. The psalmist is saying, The Lord did not desire my sacrifice, my offering, but the Lord opened my ears. God opens our ears so that we can learn His word. Not that we don't need to sacrifice and offer, but above all, we need to obey God. Obedience to God is the greatest sign that we are worshippers of the Lord. Obedience to God is the first step to living a life of spiritual blessings and material blessings. Obey the Lord, and He will perform extraordinary miracles in your life, in your story, not just because you deserve it, but because of God's mercy upon your life, because of the grace of the Lord upon your life. The word of God goes further in verse 7 of Psalm 40, saying, Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. In this verse 7, the psalmist is saying that your life, your story, is written in God's book. Meaning God writes our story. We simply need to accept what God has written for us. God has written a story of salvation for your life. You need to accept this salvation in your life. God has written for you a story of prosperity, a story of happiness, a story of honor, and a story of conquest. You only need to open your mouth and say, I take hold of the story that God has written for me. I want to live what the Lord has written for my life. The moment you wholeheartedly believe that the Lord has a story of victory and success in your life, and the moment you embrace that story and desire to live that story, that story becomes a reality in your life, and you experience the best of God. That is why many people cannot experience the best of God because they believe they are failures and defeated. But stop thinking that way. Stop thinking that you are a failure, that you are unhappy. Instead, think in the following way, believe with all your heart that you can do all things through Him who strengthens you. Believe that you are chosen by God and that the story He has written for your life is greater than any battles you may face. God has the best for you. Believe and take hold of it. Verse 8 of Psalm 40 further tells us, I desire to do your will, my God, your law is within my heart. Notice that the psalmist, in verse 8, declares to God, saying, I desire. Which means, I take pleasure, I have the will to do your will. The greatest thing on this planet and in this life is to do the will of God. Nothing is better, and nothing compares to fulfilling the Father's will. When we do God's will, spiritual wonders happen in our lives. Always. Seek to do God's will so that you may experience the best of God here on earth. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah and also in Deuteronomy, chapter 28, that those who do the will of the Father, who listen to the voice of the Lord and obey His commandments, will eat the best of the land. There will be prosperity in their homes. For this reason, always obey God's commands. Always obey the voice of the Lord. Find satisfaction, take delight in doing the will of the Father. In verse 9 of Psalm 40, it says, I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly, I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. In this verse, the psalmist declares that he proclaimed the word of God in the congregation. This shows us that we must preach the word of righteousness. You may say, but I don't have time to preach. Then be a missionary. Share this video with a friend. By doing so, you are contributing to the kingdom of the Father. 
Preaching the word also means cooperating with those who have the gift of preaching, helping to spread the word of God. You may say, I don't know how to preach, but you can share this video with a friend, and they will listen to the word and be edified. But whenever you can, proclaim the word of salvation. Verse 10 of Psalm 40 says, I do not hide your righteousness in my heart, I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Here, the psalmist reinforces once again that he did not hide the righteousness of God in his heart. Instead, he proclaimed what was in his heart, the fervent word of God. When the word of God is fervently in your heart, do not grow weary of preaching, do not tire of proclaiming it. Verse 11 tells us even more, Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord, may your love and faithfulness always protect me. Here in verse 11, the psalmist is declaring to the Lord, Do not hold back, Lord, do not prevent your mercy. Who are we without the mercy of God? Without God's mercy, we are like a dry leaf tossed by the wind. Without God's mercy, we can do nothing and accomplish nothing. But when we have God's mercy upon our lives, that is when we are strengthened in the Lord and experience the benevolence, grace, and goodness of the Father. Verse 12 says, For troubles without number surround me, my sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Here, the psalmist David declares in verse 12 that troubles have surrounded him, and perhaps you find yourself in a similar situation to David. When you look ahead, behind, and to the sides, all you see are troubles trying to destroy you, trying to cloud your vision of God. But God is saying, I am the one who guards you. I am the one who defends you. Do not fear them troubles that are before you and around you. In verse 12, the psalmist clearly states, For troubles without number surround me. The Bible says in the letter written by Peter that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, but around us are God's protecting angels, and no harm will come upon you, and no disaster will enter your home, as Psalm 91 declares. But the psalmist, in verse 12, says, they are more numerous than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Here, the psalmist is truly in a very complicated situation. The troubles surrounding him were numerous. He even affirms that they were more numerous than the hairs of his head. So, the situation was chaotic and challenging for David. But David's trust was in God. That's why in verse 13, he says, Be pleased, Lord, to save me, Lord, come quickly to help me. Here, the psalmist is asking the Lord to deliver him, to hurry and aid him. It is very similar to what we see in Psalm 70, Hasten, O God. In verse 3, he is saying, Be pleased, Lord, to save me and come quickly to help me. God is hastening to deliver you, my sister and brother. God is hastening to aid you, so rest assured. And in verse 14, the psalmist says, May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame, may those who plot my ruin turn back in dismay. There are people who wish you harm. There are people who desire your defeat. They will not witness your downfall. They will not. See you fail because the one who is with you is greater than the sea. The one who is with you is greater than the storms, greater than the struggles. The one who is with you is the Almighty. And those who dug a pit for you to fall into, they themselves will fall into that pit. First, because God will grant you deliverance. And in verse 14, the psalmist tells you, May those who seek my life be disgraced and put. To shame, may those who plot my ruin turn back in dismay. Those who wish you harm will be confounded by God because the Lord is with you to deliver you. Believe with all your heart that God is 
your faithful advocate. In verse 15, the psalmist further says, Let them be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha, aha. These are the ones who mock me, those who laugh at me. They will be confounded by the Lord. This is not vengeance. This is called the justice of God. It is always good to remember that vengeance and justice belong to the Father. Vengeance is when we act by our own strength. The justice of God is when you let God judge for you, and those who wish you harm will be confounded, and the Lord will repay the insult they have made against you. In verse 16, the psalmist further says, But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, may those who love your salvation say. Continually, great is the Lord. Here, in verse 16, the psalmist declares that those who seek the face of God, those who love the salvation of the Father, may they say, Great is the Lord. You can repeat that word, Great is God. He gives me victory. Great is God. He honors me. Great is God. He saves me, defends me, protects me. And in verse 17, which is the last verse, the psalmist makes his final declaration in Psalm 40. He says, As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer, do not delay, O my God. This verse is very beautiful. The psalmist seems to pour out his heart before the Father, and he confesses his situation before God. In verse 17 of Psalm 40, he says, As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer, do not delay. O oh my God! This verse 17, the psalmist concludes Psalm 40 on a high note. Perhaps you feel like the psalmist David, feeling like a poor and needy person. Poverty here doesn't mean financial poverty but rather a poverty of the soul. He is in need of God. But he affirms by saying, The Lord takes thought for me. Hey, my sister and my brother, God takes care of you. God takes care of you in the smallest details. God takes care of you in all things. Pay attention to what God is speaking to you. Psalm 40 is very powerful, and it shows in verse 17 that God takes care of those who are in need. And if you are in need of God, if you are in need of Him, know that God takes care of you. He carries you in His arms and He says to you, Daughter, do not fear for I am with you, Son, do not fear for I am with you. Take courage in me. Rejoice in me. Rest and wait and trust. Why will you sing the song of victory? Those who mocked you will see the glory of God in your life. The Lord will honor your steps. The Lord will honor your life and your story. And you will share a great testimony of victory in your life. And those who hear this testimony will say, Only the Lord is God. Only the Lord is God. I want to invite you at this moment to join your faith with mine as we pray together. I want to pray for your life. Leave your prayer requests in the comments, no matter how simple they may be. Share what you need from God at this moment. What do you urgently need God to do in your life, this month, or this year? What do you need God to do? Let's pray. The Prayer of Psalm 40 The prayer of those who wait and trust in the Lord, for those who wait and trust will be rewarded by God. Close your eyes in this moment. And pray with me, the Holy Spirit of Truth. Here in your presence, we are and we want to ask for forgiveness for all our faults and weaknesses, forgiveness for all our sins. Here I am, your servant, Lord, and here is your servant who listens to me at this moment. Your Word confirms to us in Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me. God, 
come and incline yourself to the life of this woman and this man, granting your victory, your peace, your grace, your anointing, and your liberation. God, we read here Psalm 40. Verse by verse, and we understand, Lord, that you are a God of mercy. We understand in this Psalm 40 that you are a God who works on behalf of those who wait for him. And you are a living God who performs signs and wonders in the lives of those who fear you, in the lives of those who honor you, in the lives of those who believe in your word. Lord Jesus, I want to present every life that listens to me at this moment. We want to unite our faith, believing that you are the God of the impossible, the one who can make the supernatural happen, no matter how difficult the prayer request that your servant has placed in the comments. Lord of this video, in the name of Jesus, come and perform the supernatural, come and open the doors that are closed, come and grant your blessing, your victory. Enter with providence. Lord, into the causes, into justice. Enter with providence. Lord, come and untie everything that is tied up. Come and unlock everything that is locked. May your providence reach, Lord, your servant and the servant who prays alongside me. God, come and perform the supernatural. If it is sickness, heal it in this moment. If it is open doors, Lord, come and open the doors. God, make the supernatural happen. Pour out a rain of grace, a rain of victory, a rain of blessing, a rain of prosperity in the life of my sister, in the life of my brother who listens to me. In this hour, God, come and attend to the tears of this woman, the tears of this man who humbly asks for your victory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your victory, receive your blessing in this hour. Receive your Prayer answer in the name of Jesus. Say Amen and thank God. Repeat this phrase with me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Repeat this phrase with me, I will overcome because I am confident in God. I take hold of the blessings of Psalm 40 in my life. Repeat once again, I take hold of the blessings of Psalm 40 in my life. I am a victorious person in Christ Jesus. Repeat this phrase with all your faith and hope. I am a victorious person in Christ Jesus. I take hold of my blessing, and I take hold of my victory. In the name of Jesus. This is the prayer of Psalm 40, and may the blessings of Psalm 40 be upon your life, your home, and your family. Praise be to God, who grants us victory through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I extend my heartfelt greetings to all my brothers and sisters, with the holy and mighty peace of our Lord. May God bless your life, and may He bless your family in a special way. We will be praying the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm, one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible. This psalm will be a blessing for your life and your family. May God bless you as you listen to every word of this powerful psalm until the end, for each word of this psalm carries a blessing for you and your entire family. We will study verse by verse and pray through this powerful psalm. I have a special request for you, share this psalm with a friend, a loved one, or a family member. It will undoubtedly be a blessing in their life. Also, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to receive more prayers and psalms. Today, we will pray the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm. It is the most read and well-known psalm in the Bible, written by David. Verse 1 tells us, The Lord is my shepherd. This signifies a relationship. When the psalmist said that the Lord was his shepherd, he was expressing that God is the one who takes care of him, defends him, protects him, and keeps him safe. 
That's why he is my shepherd. When we observe the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep, we realize that the shepherd is willing to give his life for the sheep. And we are the sheep of God. The Lord is our shepherd, and this is the relationship God has with us. This is the intimacy we have with the Father. Remember that you are a sheep, and God is your shepherd. He takes care of you, protects you, defends you, and keeps you safe. The 23rd Psalm continues, I shall not want. This means that He will not fail me. In moments of struggle, He will be with me. I shall not want, means that He provides for me. He grants me my needs, whatever I require, He will supply. He is your shepherd, and you will lack nothing, absolutely nothing. He will supply your needs, so you shall not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures, the phrase, He makes me lie down, means that He makes you rest, He gives you rest for your heart. In green pastures, means that this faithful shepherd carries us in his arms and places us in lush pastures. He makes us lie down, he makes us rest in a green and prosperous place. Green pastures symbolize prosperity. He makes you lie down in prosperity, he makes you happy in the arms of this faithful shepherd. He leads me beside quiet waters, this is the care of this shepherd. He gently guides me to calm waters. It is the Lord who guides you, directing your steps to make the right decisions in life. Don't worry because the one who takes care of you is the faithful shepherd, the good shepherd who leads you to calm waters. Quiet waters are a place of refreshment, a place of tranquility. This shows God's special care for us. The Apostle Peter said, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The one who cares for you created the heavens and the earth, the sea and the stars, and he takes care of you in every detail. And he restores my soul, the 23rd Psalm revives my soul. This represents inner healing. Our soul is where all our feelings reside, all the emotions of our life are within our soul. If you feel sadness, it comes from the soul. If you feel anguish, it comes from the soul. If you feel joy, it comes from the soul. In other words, all the positive and negative emotions come from our soul, and the 23rd Psalm tells us that he restores our soul. To restore means to bring relief to your soul. If you, who are listening to me, have a troubled soul, a sad soul, a weary soul. The Good Shepherd is coming to meet you at this moment, refreshing your soul, bringing peace to your spirit, bringing peace to your life. Believe that He will restore your soul. The 23rd Psalm also says, He guides me along the right paths, this represents God's complete guidance. For those of you who are feeling lost, unsure of which path to take in life, whether to travel or stay, questioning if a relationship is from God or not, or contemplating whether you should remain in your current church, perhaps you have doubts in your heart and feel without God's guidance, let me minister to your heart and tell you this. He will guide you along the paths of righteousness. This is a promise from Psalm 23, He guides me along the right paths. In other words, the Lord will lead your steps towards what is just and right, so that you can make the right decisions. So, let the Good Shepherd guide you, the Shepherd of Psalm 23. The text continues, For His name's sake, He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, means the purpose of our lives is to glorify the name of the Lord. For his name's sake, means, I will do things in your life for the sake of my name. I will bless your financial life, your relationships, your family, 
and your health for the sake of my name, says the Lord. It is for the sake of this precious and powerful name that he will guide you. That's what the psalmist is saying. For the love of this beautiful and wonderful name, for the love of God's name, he will guide you along the paths of righteousness. The 23rd Psalm further states, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does this valley of the shadow of death that David refers to represent? It represents trials, struggles, and adversity. That fight where you thought, I will die in this test, I will perish in this trial. Have you ever faced a similar situation where you thought you would perish in the midst of a struggle? Let me know in the comments if you have experienced the valley of the shadow of death, that trial, that adversity where you thought you would perish. But the psalmist is saying, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, I will fear no evil represents faith. When we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, through the valleys of testing, anguish, struggles, and disappointments, we need to hold on to our faith. We need to believe with all our hearts that we will not perish or die because the one who is our shepherd is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the path that directs your steps, that illuminates your spirit. He is the life that rescues you from death. If you are going through a trial, make your prayer request because we will pray for you. This was the confidence of the psalmist, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For you are with me represents God's faithfulness to us. When the psalmist David said in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me, it signifies God's faithfulness to us. Even when going through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From Monday to Sunday, God is with you to deliver you, protect you, guard you, restore you, and bless you. This confidence of the psalmist made him believe that even if he walked through the valleys of shadows and death, he would not fear. The one who is with you is greater than the valleys, greater than the struggles because the Lord is your shepherd. The expression, for you are with me, also refers to the shepherd's staff and rod. With the staff, the shepherd corrects, and with the rod, the shepherd pulls the sheep. In other words, whenever we, the sheep of Christ, are walking in the wrong path, he will use the rod to correct us and bring us back to the path of victory, the path of peace. That's why the psalmist. It says that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, they comfort me because they correct me, they correct me because they love me. Those of you who are mothers know very well, those of you who are fathers know very well, when you correct your child, you correct them because you love them. And the psalmist is saying, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff was used for correction and protection, so as a sheep, in the position of a sheep, he is declaring to God that this protection of life, this protection of God, brings comfort to his soul. In Psalm 23, it says, In the presence of my enemies, which represents the honor and exaltation of God in your life. When the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, it's God telling you that he will honor you, not just in the presence of your friends, but in the presence of your enemies. This is not vengeance. This is divine justice because there is a difference between vengeance and justice. Vengeance is when you take matters into your own hands, but justice is when the hand of God acts in your favor. Your enemies, those who mock you, 
despise you, humiliate you, those who look at you with disdain, those who look down on you or up at you, those who scorn you. These are the people who will sit at the table and witness the honor of God in your life so that the name of God may be glorified. That's why the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God will honor you, exalt you, and prosper you, and those who mocked will have to applaud. Those who slandered will have to glorify and spread the good news that God honored your life and gave you victory. And the psalm goes even further, stating that anointing my head with oil represents consecration. One day, your mind, where thoughts reside, will be filled with thoughts of faith, thoughts of conviction. You will understand perfectly and clearly that God is guiding your life and that He is your faithful shepherd, guiding your steps. Anointing my head with oil represents the Lord consecrating your life, declaring that you are anointed by God. You are anointed, my Lord. And the psalm continues, my cup overflows, which represents God's prosperity in your life. God is saying, I will not only fill your cup, but I will cause it to overflow. Imagine when you pour water into a cup, it fills up, but if you leave the tap running, it will overflow. There will be water inside and water on the outside. And when you hold a cup that's overflowing, you can feel what's on the inside and what's on the outside. Here, God is saying that He will overflow your cup. In other words, you will receive abundance both internally and externally. You will have prosperity in your life. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He wants to bless you abundantly, not just for your own benefit, but also to bless others. Just like a cup overflowing with water, you will experience an overflow of God's blessings, pouring into your life from within and spilling over to touch the lives of those around you. God's prosperity will be evident in every aspect of your life. He is saying, perceive that when you hold a cup overflowing, you can feel what's inside and what's outside. That's what I will do with your cup. You will receive overflowing blessings, both inwardly and outwardly. Your cup will not merely be filled, it will overflow. God wants to bless your life with abundance, not only for your own sake, but also to bless others. He wants to pour out His blessings upon you, filling your cup until it overflows. Open your heart and receive this promise. Declare with faith, Lord, You are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. Fill every area of my life with Your prosperity and blessings. God desires to overflow in your home, your relationships, your finances, your health, and every aspect of your life. Embrace this promise and experience the overflowing goodness of God. In your life, there will be abundance, not only in your home but also to help your fellow human beings. Your table will be filled with plenty, not just for yourself but also for your friends and those in need. Your wardrobe will be abundant, providing for both yourself and those who require assistance. God will overflow, abundantly pouring out blessings. It signifies that you will have so much more, not just for yourself but also for others. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He desires to make you prosper in every aspect of your life, financially, spiritually, materially, and in all ways. God wants to overflow in your home, your life, and every area. And even in the darkest times, you shall not be overcome. Embrace this promise, claim it with faith. Declare, Lord, you are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. God doesn't want to just fill you, 
He wants to overflow in your home, in your life, in every area. And even in the face of adversity, His abundant blessings will not fade away. Embrace the overflowing goodness of God in your life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This represents daily blessings. When the psalmist in Psalm 23 says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He is declaring that God will be with you every day. It's a daily blessing. Goodness and mercy are present in your life every single day. On Monday, there's a blessing. On Tuesday, there's a blessing. On Wednesday, there's a blessing. On Thursday, there's a blessing. On Friday, there's a blessing from God. On Saturday, there's a blessing from God. On Sunday, every day of your life, mercy and goodness will be with you, guiding you, protecting you, and blessing you. This represents daily provision in your life. The Psalm 23 concludes by saying, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It represents the promise of eternity. The text tells you that you will be in God's house forever. You will find comfort in this good shepherd who watches over you, guides you, and ensures that you lack nothing. You can declare, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You will not lack in your home. You will not lack because God will overflow in your storehouses and overflow in your life. Take hold of this word, this promise, this blessing, this gift from God in your life. I want to offer a special prayer for you. These were the verses of Psalm 23, and I explained each verse. Share it with a friend who may not fully understand the meaning of Psalm 23. This video will help you and others better comprehend the significance of each verse. In this very moment, I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 23. If you can, close your eyes and focus on God because we are going to pray in this moment. Leave your prayer requests in the comments, and I will present each prayer request to God, asking the Father to grant you what you need, what you require, and what you desire. Let's pray, let's enter into this covenant of prayer in this moment. Let us pray, Holy Spirit of God, Almighty Lord who created the heavens and the earth, you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Lead us beside still waters, guide us gently, and provide for us. You are the faithful shepherd, you are the Almighty Lord, and I want to lift up the life of every woman listening to me. I want to present the life of every man listening to me in this moment, God. Perhaps I may not know them personally, but your Spirit knows their hearts. Your Spirit knows their hearts, so come and bless them, come and prosper them, come and bless their lives, the lives of those who are listening to this Psalm 23. May your blessings reach them, granting them victory, preparing a table before them in the presence of their enemies. Anoint their heads with oil, so that their cup may overflow. Overflow, Lord, in their financial lives, in their spiritual lives, in their lives, O Lord. May there be prosperity in their lives because you are their shepherd, and they shall not lack. So, Jesus, we want to exercise our faith in prayer, believing wholeheartedly that you will do the impossible. God, I present the marriage of this woman. Come and bless them. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this marriage. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this company. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this work. Open the doors of employment. Open the doors of financial abundance. Lord, bless this couple who desires to get married. May your blessing, 
the blessing of Psalm 23, come to meet them so that they may attain this gift, God. For this man and this woman who are unemployed, open the doors of employment because you are our shepherd, and we shall not lack anything. We take hold of every blessing. We take hold of every victory that is recorded in Psalm 23. We take hold, Lord, of all the blessings declared in Psalm 23. May this Psalm 23, Lord, be fulfilled in our lives so that we may experience the prosperity of the sheep in the arms of the Good Shepherd. God, you are our refuge and strength. You are the faithful shepherd. In the name of Jesus, I present each prayer request, and may the blessing of Psalm 23 rest upon each prayer request. May you, Lord, prosper, honor, exalt, and grant your victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask and we thank you in advance. Amen. Thank God for the victories of Psalm 23 in my life, in the name of Jesus. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. God bless you abundantly. A big hug.